All right, folks, this is my first tuning session since installing 261. I'm at the default PIDs, and uh, I'm just going to walk you through it. And, of course, like I always do for y'all's videos, I'm going to do for mine. I'm going to bring up the gyros, and I'm going to zoom all the way out to 10%, and let's see how they look. And we can see that here the throttle is down. As soon as the throttle gets raised, the gyros get pretty messy. Pretty messy, pretty thick lines, lots of noise. It's only when the throttle is down that the gyros really settle down. So we'll definitely be looking into that and wondering if either the filtering isn't right or maybe there's a tuning related issue or maybe it is that uh, maybe I got a motor that's that needs a bell replaced or something. I may need to go back and vibration check my motors. Um, maybe that's why I was having so much trouble with 241. <laughs> Let's take a look at the individual axes and see what we can see. At 100%. hundred percent zoom level that is yeah it's pretty messy here when the throttle is up it is pretty messy pretty spiky lines spiky 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 we could certainly look at the yaw gyro since the yaw degain is zero if the yaw term is super noisy that may indicate we have a noisy gyro, since we know it can't possibly be the D-term. And we do see a lot of P-term noise here as well. We certainly could have an unbalanced prop, but these props usually are pretty decent from the factory, and I've inspected them all for damage. None of them is obviously damaged. It might be worth it to, uh, to just swap out all the props before trying to do any tuning-related stuff. It's impossible to really tell much about the P-gain because the D-term is so messy and is, is hiding. It's, we can't really, the P-term the, the P -term trace is really just being jerked around here. It's not really smooth, so it's hard to tell if that's correct or not. Any P-term oscillations would be obscured by the wild activity of the D-term. Uh, so... I'm going to take the D-gain down, I'm going to rerun the test flight, and I'm going to see how things look. I'm also going to do a vibration test on my motors and see if any of them stands out as particularly noisy. Well, I have done a physical inspection of the motors, and a couple of them do appear to have a loose bell, so that certainly could be contributing to these issues. Uh, there's a good rule of thumb, which is if you have a mechanical issue, it's better to solve the mechanical issue than to try to tune around the mechanical issue. Your copter really needs to be in tip-top mechanical shape before you try to make the tuning work for you. There's there's some balance there. I don't I don't meticulously balance all my props. Who's got time for that? I do to, I do ex demand that the copter tune around the slight imbalance that may be in the props from the factory. But if you've got a motor with a with a bad bell, then you're gonna have a hard time tuning around that. Let's see how these numbers come out as I spin up the motors and I do have the props off and let's see how they do. There's a little bit of skipping there at the top as we hit the rev limiter. Let's, start, let's take the next motor. Oh, perfect. Beautiful. Beautiful. That one's way better. So motor number two, not a problem. Motor number one. A little worse. Motor number three, clean as a whistle. Motor number four, clean as a whistle. Try that again real quick. Yeah, motor number four, clean as a whistle. Okay, so then it seems pretty clear that motor number one is much worse than the others. And so that's uh, probably the one that we're going to want to look into. Okay, that's what I'll do next is I'll check that motor out and see if it um, needs maybe a new bell or a new shaft or something like that. Well, upon very close examination, it does appear that that motor had 
uh, maybe it was a bent shaft or a, an out of true bell, but upon rotating the motor shaft and looking at the size of the slit between the bell and the base, I could see that there was some small difference there. So I've gone ahead and replaced the bell, and let's see how that will go. We're going to run this test again, fingers crossed. Perfect. Okay. So that apparently was the issue. Fingers crossed again. Fingers crossed. Well, you guys, it turns out it was not just the motor that was giving me problems. This was the bigger problem. <laughs> Broken standoffs. Yeah. Um, so you're not going to get good clean gyro traces when your flight controller is flopping around in the wind. Uh, I will replace this, repair this, and basically start over from scratch. In the meantime, happy flying.